Hi everyone, my name is Allie Truesdale and we're back with this week's edition of The Extra Point. Today we are speaking to J.W. Cannon, who is the Senior Project Lead for Sponsorship and Events at UPS. Um, J.W. was also a graduate of James Madison, so we are glad to have him today, coming from Atlanta. So thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. It's been a very, very long time since I've been back to JMU, so it's great to be here. Awesome. Well, we just want to start off um, getting a little bit to know a little bit more about your background, how you got to where you are today, and then maybe tell us a little bit about what you do for the EPS. Sure. Uh, my, my background's pretty diverse. I've been kind of all over the board, um, particularly from a sports perspective, but I've sold sponsorships in my life. I've started small businesses in the, in the sports space, including a golf umbrella manufacturer that we actively marketed in the United States. I've worked on the agency side with great clients such as the Home Depot, Bank of America, Auto Trader. I've worked on the brand side, obviously, with UPS most recently, but also uh, worked with ING. So I've kind of been all over the board and had a really broad range of experience. And what I do at UPS is I currently manage our company's largest sponsorship platform, which is College Sports. We have an investment with 69 individual schools, three conferences, the NCAA, CBS, Turner, as well as eight brand ambassadors at any given time. So it's a pretty broad platform. And more recently, I've added our domestic sponsorships platform as well as our corporate events and trade show group, which manages about 300 events a year. So I oversee all that. Wow. So you have a lot on your plate on the job. It's, yeah, suffice to say, yep. So throughout your career, we've noticed that you've worked with a number of national and even international companies and clients. So what type of skills have helped you succeed while working with these groups? To me, you know, this is a business more so than anything else. And so long as people can remember to focus on that aspect when they're thinking about going, to, going into a career in the sports business, you got to focus on that business part. We all realize why people are there, that they love sports, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're no different than anybody else that's in the business. But what really sets those folks apart is really their focus on solid business principles, understanding the principles of sales, understanding the principles of marketing, understanding the principles of management. That doesn't change whether you're working in an accounting firm or whether you're working for a team or a property. So it would help for students in school right now to really hone those skills and figure out what it is that they want to do within sports rather than just being a sports fan. Absolutely. You know, I think the worst thing that I hear when people come in for an interview is, I'm here because I love sports. At the end of the day, we, when we hire people, we bring them in because of their ability to solve business problems, right? You know, we have a business problem to solve, and we believe this person can actually solve that for us. We know you love sports, get mm -hmm. that. You know, that passion is there. But that passion is also there for the other 100 people who have applied for that position. So it's important to really bring through the business skills that you can bring to an organization. And do you feel um, being within the kinesiology department at JMU, and with that sport management background, you had to take a lot of business classes. Do you feel that those business classes that you took have um, increased your skills within that and have helped you with your career? Absolutely. I mean, I think they're, they're key to the education that, that I had here at JMU. Um, you, know, you had the mix of the sports side, the sports business side of things, but it was also good to see what other companies and businesses are doing out there because ultimately, the, the business side of things is really what those companies care about. So some of your past clients that you've formed relationships with or partnerships with have included the ESPN, um, Major League Baseball, the U.S. Olympic team. What strategies do you have when forming relationships with these high-profile companies? You know, I, they all, they're all kind of the same to me. Um, ESPN, you know, despite the fact that it's a worldwide leader, multi-million dollar, <laughs> multi-billion dollar company, in a way, we never really approached it any differently than any other lower level minor league team partnership. It's all about understanding what your objectives are going in and how that property can be a conduit to have actually meet those objectives. You know, what, what tools from their toolbox can they bring to help you as a business um, accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? So at the end of the day, you know, those may be on a much higher profile, but you never really approach those the same way. Or it, really approach them in a different way from a business aspect. They're all the same in my book. So going back to when you were first graduating from JMU, starting out, 
What's some advice that you can give students who are starting out in these entry level positions and then want to work their way up or get to that next level? I know you've obviously worked your way up the ladder, so how can students who are in that entry level position get to that next job? Well, networking in this business is absolutely key, and I'm sure you've got a lot of professors that are hammering that point home to you guys every day, but getting out there and meeting people and talking to people is absolutely key in this business. It's so small, you tend to run into those same people over and over and over again. And at the end of the day, when a position goes up for people to start applying for, you can guarantee just because of who it's working for that there are going to be hundreds of applicants for that individual job. So how you set yourself apart in that pile is not what you know or your resume on paper, it's the relationships that you have that can position you in the right way to kind of get to the top of the pile. So those relationships are very, very key. And nowadays, it is so easy to network. There are so many tools that are available to students. They're absolutely free. You think of things like Twitter. You think of things like LinkedIn, where lots of sports and business executives who are open and honest and communicative, they leverage those tools every day. And they're absolutely free of charge. And if students aren't taking advantage of that, then shame on them. Mm -hmm. So touching on Twitter as a great networking tool, you do facilitate a Twitter sport chat with the SV chat. So what advice do you have while participating in the SV chat, maybe with responding to questions and networking with professionals? How can students get to those professionals and connect with them? Well, I mean, Twitter is one of those places where there, there are a significant amount of sports business professionals on there at many levels. Um, you know, you've got students all the way up to the highest executives and CEOs in the industry. And it's an easy way to actually get out there and talk with them. And these chats are a great opportunity for students and professionals in, in the entire sports business to actually showcase their expertise. We bring up topics every week that are relevant to the sports business world, whether it be current events or whether it be a philosophical topic or whether it be career growth. And it gives you an opportunity to showcase your expertise in front of really what's a worldwide audience of sports business executives. So students on their Twitter can follow the SP SV chat, and then you'll ask questions or bring up topics, and they can just reply through tweets back to it. And Correct. So we join the discussion. That's right. We uh, I, I host the, the discussion every week with Lou Embriano, who's the former CMO of the Patriots, who runs his own marketing company nowadays. Um, it takes place every night, uh, every Sunday evening at 9:30 p.m. Eastern, and really it's very simple. Lou, Lou and I will I'll moderate the questions um, when people are ready to chime in on a subject. They, um, they go ahead and do that. They refer to the question in their answer. They tag their answer with SB Chat, and you just follow along the hashtag throughout the conversation. And we have anywhere from 50 to 500 people that participate in this chat every single weekend, depending on the weekend. So it's a great interactive forum and an opportunity for you guys to showcase your expertise, as well as to, to meet other like-minded professionals. So those of you on Twitter, join um, JW and the SB Chat 930 at, on Sunday nights and you can get involved with their discussions about sports business. So we have one final question for you. I know. <laughs> I know you're going to the game tomorrow. Who do you have, JMU or Richmond? Oh, you can't, can't root against the Dukes. I have to, have to go with the guys from JMU. Um, it's been a long time since I've been to a football game and I'm not coming here to see them lose. So. <laughs> <laughs> Big rivalry there. Yep. Well, thank you, JW. It was great talking to you today, and thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of The Extra Point.